San Diego Comic Con, Maddie Palooza, 2013. Normally, I'd be posting up the whole panel, just like all my fellow media colleagues, Pixel Dan, AFI, Toy News. We were all told we could not record the presentation. We could record Scott Knightlick and the rest of the panel people talking, but we could not record the presentation itself. So you might be seeing bits and pieces of the presentation as the week goes on. I have some of it, and we will try and see how we can put that together. So let's go over some of the highlights. Hopefully you were following Council of the First Ones and Global Masters podcast, because I was Twittering all through the panel with pictures and updates. First, let's start with Club Infinite Earths. The rest of the lineup was announced, including Pantera, Ice, and the Club Exclusive. Now, there's a little catch with the Club Exclusive for next year. Doomsday is going to be done in two different ways. You get the basic figure in the prison outfit if Club Infinite Earth hits the first goal. Then, if it makes it to the second goal, it gets really tweaked out. It looks awesome. I did put a pic going on to Batman. We all know that Mattel has the rights to the 1966 Adam West Batman. And it's hitting stores starting in August. And if you're lucky enough to be at San Diego, you could get the Batusi or a Matty Collector. I believe it's August 8th. I could be wrong. I'm not looking at my Matty Collector post San Diego uh, order yet, but for those who are big fans of that series, you're going to be getting the Bat Belt for $125. It will have four opening pouches that open downward and a boomerang made out of plastic. I talked about the boomerang yesterday, and I'll be putting up pics of that was able to get a hold of the belt, and it's pretty heavy, pretty well detailed, too. Sure looks like what I remember Adam West wearing when I used to watch the Batman series. Let's go on to Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, you know yesterday how I predicted it could be the Ectopack by the shape? No, I was wrong. Instead, you're going to get Ecto-1, you know, the car, in the six inch scale where your six inch Ghostbuster figures will fit in if it meets the minimum number of pre-orders. You know, sort of like what we did with Castle Grayskull. If the pre-orders are met, you can have the option of buying a special two pack of the Ghostbusters without their backpacks so they can sit in the car correctly. Uh, Scott said that the car will be playing probably the music and just like Castle Grayskull they don't have an actual model. It's a foam cardboard cutout that's in the display. Not even a B sheet. They get at least that. Going on to Back to the Future. No, there are no new figures, but they are having a special auction of a signed hoverboard signed by Michael J. Fox, which will be going up for auction, and all the proceeds will be going to the Michael J. Fox Foundation for, I believe it's cerebral palsy. I could be wrong. I can't remember offhand his uh, main cause, but I believe he has that. Not, 
not 100% sure. So please forgive me if I got the disease wrong, but it is the Michael J. Fox Foundation that the proceeds will be going to. Reminder that Mattel is involved with the Make-A-Wish Foundation auction where they have six Justice League characters in it looks like 12 inch scale up for auction and all the proceeds will go to Make-A-Wish Foundation. For those who are not familiar with that foundation, it grants wishes to children with life-threatening diseases or ailments and so far at this convention I've met two of the recipients of the Make-A-Wish Foundation granting wishes. One was in the Transformers panel and one was in the WWE panel. So it was really nice to actually see them there. Now on to what we really want to know. Masters of the Universe. Starting out with the rest of the filmation line, we will only have one good guy, Seahawk. Seahawk is pretty cool. Um, the armor gives him more of a chest, so he looks like he's a little bit bigger than most of the regular characters. Uh, the ascot, they have it a little separate, which is okay. He's based on Enter the Seahawk, which is the very first appearance. But they did bring in elements of his evolution in the filmation. He does have the falcon ring on, and his shield is in the falcon shape, even though it's on the side instead of straight out. No, he does not come with Davy Jones. Sorry, they missed that. So, he will be coming in November. He's a Club Filmation subscription only. So, if you did not get Club Filmation, you're out of luck. And to end the Filmation sub, we are getting strong arm or stronger, strong or. Reason why his name had to be changed is strong arm is licensed to a different company. So they did have to tweak a little bit of his name because of trademark and licensing reasons. But as Scott told us, we all know who he is. So our filmation lineup to end 2013, five bad guys, five from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe filmation show, one good guy from she -Ra. Going on to Club Eternia. No big surprises as we pretty much know. We are getting Gildor. He will be November. Modula, sorry. Too excited about Modulok. I'll get to him soon enough. Mantena was moved to October. We are also getting in December. You know how we've had all these controversy about Neptune and Plundar? Well, Plundar ends the 2013 year of Masters of the Universe. We have a big purple bunny in our collections now. Well, at least we got another Filmation sub figure in. But I think the most of the news has to go to the 2014 line. We're starting off the year in a big, big way. When Scott said we will not be upset with 2014, he was not kidding, guys. We're starting off with Too Bad. Beautifully sculpted. No, it's not in a three-pack. I've been asked that a few times already, just walking to my hotel. For Crespo, his wish has been granted. 
The third leader of the Great Rebellion comes in February. Glimmer. She will have her staff and an orb. She's done by the style guide slash filmation style. Thank God they did not go with the toy. The only part of the figure that comes from the toy is her staff. So that's a nice touch too. Probably the biggest news coming from the 2014 lineup has to be Modulock. He will be the first quarter big beast item. He will not come in a blister pack. He will be in a regular clothes box with artwork done by Axel Jimenez. I hope I pronounced your name right. We all know his great artwork and Mattel is utilizing him on Motu. So we will see his passion. Modulok is done in the same fashion as the vintage where we can create our own version. We will have tons of parts that we can put together in all which ways. Unfortunately with the prototype that was at the uh, center, Scott did not want anyone touching him. And just from the people who were there taking close-up photos, not even touching him, his head fell off. It's still in production and still being tweaked on. Traveling convention item will be Goatman from the Golden Books. It will be the only one from the Golden Book line. But I know I skipped something very important that I know people want to know. If it had, if you haven't heard already, the last big two pack. For 2013, Hot Trippers! <laughs> and their heads do come off, so you can put on any of the male heads. Female heads don't work on the Hot Troopers. I do have pictures, and when you see Dan Pixel's walkthrough with Scott, you'll see they did try to put Shira's head on a trooper's body. It didn't fit. The hair got in the way. But at least you can recreate that iconic scene when He-Man dressed like a horde trooper to get into the Fright Zone to get to Adora from Episode 3, Shira Unchained. So that's great. The two horde troopers, one clean, no damage. The other one will have some battle damage. So there is a little variant. We will get four weapons, the classic one that came with the toy, a filmation baton, and two different shields. So it's a mix of both the filmation with the classic. The look does go more towards the vintage toy. But it does have that flair with the filmation. They even mimicked the button in the middle that you would press for the Horde Trooper to break apart. So that's really cool. As far as the sub exclusive, it is the unnamed one. And just like it said, no one knows what it looks like. Scott will not show what it, the unnamed one looks like until we get it in our hands March of 2014. In fact, in the display case, all we saw was a display stand with a big question mark. Now, 
going on to things that are not part of subs at all. Coming in October, start saving your pennies, money, sell your second born child, because by now you've already sold your first born, because October is going to be a heavy month. We are getting the jet ski. It's a With sky high, price point was not told to us. We also have coming weapon pack number four. This will be the last weapons pack in the classic line. I repeat. It's the last one. So don't think there's going to be a weapons pack next year. Scott has already said no weapons pack at all. And if you want cowl, you can get them in this pack. Castle Grey Skull updates. It will be coming out in November. It will be available in limited supply on day of sale. It will be $300 plus shipping and taxes if taxes apply to you. It comes with a bunch of accessories. Enough accessories to fill up at least another weapons pack. They did lower the drawbridge. They actually cut out underneath, so it will lay flat. They did modify the throne a little bit where the tail wings of the sorceress, you know, the part that's glued to her, there's a slit where they can go down, and the three big parts of the wing really look awkward, but they stand out on her. Uh, people did ask, can they cut back on the armrest so they can lay flat? Unfortunately, Scott said that piece has already gone into production. We are getting a bigger base that will snap into the base bottom, bottom inside, so you will have almost another whole room. To be added on. It still has the hole for the Wind Raider to be plugged in. And, and last but not least, we have a new addition to the Masters of the Universe slime in association with PAL, which is an entertainment group run by Stan Lee. We have Standor. During the Maddie panel, well, towards the end, right before the Q&A, Stan Lee was introduced to us, and Scott Knightlick did present him with the very first Standor, which looks a lot like him. Uh, Stan Lee did read his bio to us where he's basically the creator, or one of the creators, of the universe. He will be available in October, first at the Stanley Convention, which is late October, early November in California. And any remaining units will be available on MaddieCollector.com. Well, I believe I've covered everything from the Maddie panel. Sorry again, I couldn't record it. And sorry, I don't have pics of all the just, sorry, the Infinite Earth club figures. I will be taking pictures of them online later and posting them online. Till next time, good journey.